I'm going to show you how to do an audio waveform, audio spectrum, or an audio visualizer in DaVinci Resolve. The first two methods use a third-party plugin called Reactor. That'll give you the waveform and the spectrum. It's a free plugin. I'll show you how to download it, install it. It's really quick and easy. The third way is going to show you how to do a waveform or visualizer in the Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve. No plugin needed. So I'll throw the time codes in the notes below since this is a bit of a longer tutorial and that way you can skip around as you desire. First thing you need to do before anything is install the plugin. So if you go to this website, which I will throw in the links below, right here towards the top, you've got this installing Reactor visually, download the Reactor installer script. Click here and that's it. Once that's downloaded, you go to, back to DaVinci Resolve, go to your Fusion page. Within Fusion, all you do is drag and drop that install into the page. And you'll see you get this ready to install, da da da, install and launch. This will take a while to install. Once it's installed, what you want to do is close DaVinci Resolve and then relaunch it. So I've already closed and relaunched it. Now I'm going to go to Workspace, Scripts, and I'll have this one here, Reactor, and then Open Reactor. Once the Fusion Reactor opens, scroll down until you see this one here, Audio Waveform, or you can do a search for it. Check that. Once it's checked, you can close this. Now we're going to jump back over to the Edit page. And we're going to go to Effects, and we're just going to type Fusion, and we're going to add a fu Fusion composition. We're also going to need to make sure that we've got a WAV audio file. Reactor won't work with a MP3, which is what this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my Deliver tab, and I'm going to hit Audio Only, and then I'm going to make sure my format is WAV and that my bit depth is 16 bit. So if it's not 16 bit, you'll actually get an error message when trying to import it into the Fusion page. And then I'm going to render that WAV 16 bit. You can also, if you prefer, use a program like Audacity, import the MP3 and then export it as a WAV file. There's another limitation on this, and that limitation is going to be the file size. So the file needs to be under 50 megs, which is not much, by the way. So I had a 40-minute video I was working with the other day, and I had to break it up into three sections. In order to break it up, all you need to do, so in this case, what I've done is I've broken my files into two separate parts. So then what I'll do is I'll have a separate audio file and then I'll have a separate fusion composition that goes over that. And since it's a waveform or spectrum, they'll sync together. It, it'll look seamless. That's how to get around that issue with the size limit. All right, so now I'm gonna go into fusion with that fusion composition and I'm gonna right click in my nodes. I'm gonna go add node I'm going to go Fuses and Audio Waveform. So that's going to give me an Audio Waveform node. I'm going to select this little bubble here on the left. So that's showing me what's in the waveform. And I'm even going to connect it to my media out. Over in the right, we have our inspector now. And we want that WAV file. So I'm going to browse for mine. And I'm going to show you real quickly this other one that is not 16-bit. I'm going to import it, and you can see we get wrong bit depth, only 16-bit. Or if it's over the 50 meg, you'll get a message that says a file too large. It, with this WAV file, you can reduce the quality all you want. And the reason being is that this is just used to create the spectrum. It's not going to necessarily be out exported as the audio. My original MP3 is going to be exported as the audio. Okay, notice what I did there when I switched file sizes after I reloaded it and it reloaded the sample onto the page. Now I'm going to go over to Spectrum 
and I'm going to turn on my spectrum and I'm going to slide my player head ahead here and you can see we've got our spectrum started. Nothing too exciting about it at the moment. I'm going to switch my appearance from rough to needles to give me those little bars that I want. I'm going to change my FFT to 512 to give it a bit more thickness. You can with this, you're just going to have to kind of play with it a little bit and find out what works for you. I'm going to increase my smooth factor just a little bit as well. And my scale looks all right where it is. I, I'm, I'm happy enough with that. Now, something else that you can do is you can go over to your layout and you can change the look of this. So I'll switch mine to this kind of pink, you know, purplish color. And I'm going to increase my line thickness. There we go. I still want a little bit of space between them. There's not a whole lot you can do in regards to adjustments for this, which unfortunately is one of the downsides of this. But again, it's free. Um, if you want something that gives you a whole lot of functionality and modifications that you can do, well, in that case, you're going to need to pay for an Adobe Clearative Cloud subscription and use After Effects. Um, but you can do some changes. This is a spectrum. If you want to do a waveform, just uncheck spectrum and that'll give you a waveform. And then again, you can kind of change the levels as you want. I'm going to remove the logo because I don't really need that. And I'm going to switch back to spectrum. So I'm going to jump back to my edit page and we can kind of see now we've got the spectrum lines popping up. And when somebody talks really loud, we're kind of losing that person. So I'm going to need to drop it down a little bit. And this is just kind of where playing with some of these adjustments comes in. You're just going to have to look and see what works best for what you want. Other options are the rough that we started on with, bars, smooth, smooth filled, and needles. So you can kind of see why I went with needles. There you go. That's a basic spectrum or unchecked basic waveform that you can use in DaVinci Resolve with Reactor. First thing you need to do is make sure whatever your audio file is that it's converted to an MIDI file type. So in this case, if I have an MP3, for example, I'm going to upload it into this converter website here, MP3 to MIDI. I'll throw the link below. This isn't the only site that does that. There are plenty out there. So just take whichever one you want. In the fusion effects, grab your fusion composition and drag it over to your timeline and then expand it so that it covers the entire timeline. Then select it and go into open in fusion page. Within the fusion page, we want to add two backgrounds. So that's this icon here on the left. Click on that. It adds a background one. Select into the nodes and then add background to another background. If you stay connected or if it's selected when you do it, sometimes you might it might automatically connect them for you and we don't want that. We want to do it ourselves. So now I'm going to take my background two and actually want to connect it to that background one so that it creates a merge like this and then take that merge and connect that to my media out. So you should have something that looks like this. Select background two and then add a rectangle above that. Once your rectangle is selected, go back to your background two. And now we want to change the color of that rectangle. You can always change it to black later on if you want, um, but as you can see, the background is black. So I'm going to change it. In my case, I'm going to change it to uh, I'm going to change it to this purple because it actually is going to be what I'm eventually going to want. But you can do white or whatever. Hit OK. Now I need to change the shape of that rectangle, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go to Width, and I'm just going to drag it nice and narrow, which is how I want it, and I'm going to set my corner radius a little bit as well to give it some corners. I'm also going to select it and slide it off to the left here in order to give myself some space. I'm going to go back to background and I'm going to shift spacebar on my keyboard and it brings up this selection tools and the one you want is duplicate so you can just start typing in DUP and it'll pull up. Add that. So now we've got the duplicate down below those. And I'm just going to move this to 
keep it nice looking. With the duplicate selected, you want to decide how many copies you want. And so I'm just gonna drag mine all the way to the right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go where the center is and I'm gonna pull that to the right as well. So you can see I'm creating duplicates, multiple duplicates of those lines. And I'm gonna click on rectangle and I'm gonna go over here to this section and I'm gonna right click kind of where the word width is or height. And you've got an option here of modify with MIDI extractor. That's why we did that MIDI file. Select on that. That gave us this modifier tab. Select that. And now we can search for that MIDI file that we created earlier. Select it. And it'll now add that. In combine events, change that to sum. And it expands it quite a bit. If in your case, it expands it so that it's actually out of the frame, you can adjust that by selecting the results scale. So I'm gonna drop mine a little bit actually because I know that it's gonna be on the bottom of the screen on the other page. Now, you'll notice if I actually hit play, we are getting movement now, but they're all in the same height. So technically, if that's what you're after, it's kind of a cool effect, so you can do that as well. But I actually want mine to move separately. So you'll see here, I'm gonna go back to my duplicate node in my time offset in the inspector. I'm gonna change that to, let's just, uh, let's go 0. Point, yeah, that looks good, 0 0.32. Adjust it to whatever you want for yours. Um, actually, I might go a little higher. I'm gonna go 0 0.63 on mine. To give it a nice big amount of offset. So back in my edit page, you can see here, now I do have my waveform on, oh, and it gets quite big there at a couple of points. So maybe I'm gonna drop that offset a little bit more and a few other things, but I'll play around with it. So you can see, I actually wanted it to be visible to whereas now it is actually not visible. So what I need to do here is I'm gonna go into my inspector and I'm gonna go to composition and I wanna change my composition mode and so you can see when I start dragging drop downs, it makes it visible now. So I've got it under add and I'm also going to move it. So now when this plays, you can see I'm getting that visualization. Again, it's still too tall, so I'm gonna fix that and play with it some more. Also something to keep in mind here, a very important thing, is the audio being played is this, right? So as you're doing edits, this visualization is still going off of that MIDI file. So I'd say it's important to make sure you've got your audio how you want it and converted to a MIDI file before doing any of this and uh, just pay attention. So if you start doing edits and you start noticing this is out of sync, that's probably why you've made edits or maybe this has gotten out of alignment or something along those lines. Um, and then like in my case, I wanna make some additional changes. I can always just jump back into the Fusion page and I can start adjusting, maybe change the color, change um, from let's say, you know, that kind of purple to white or uh, the height, that kind of stuff. You can do all of that here and then it'll automatically sync with the edit. So there you go. Hope you found that useful and uh, have fun.